Hi, I am Gayla Crage Hartsoe, professor at the University of Southern California, and today we're going to talk about the Wall Street Journal Guide to Information Graphics, the do's and don'ts of presenting data, facts, and figures by Donna Wong. And today I have with me two individuals from corporate America who are going to talk about how they use data and information, in particular, how to tell a story with data and information. So let me just start with you each introducing yourselves. Great, I'm Kate McCauley, nice to meet everyone and thank you for having us. Um, I've had multiple roles in corporate America as, as, um, as Gayla mentioned, one at Barclays Capital, another at Oliver Wyman, a management consulting firm, and also working in impact investing at, at Goldman Sachs. My name is Jeff Hartsoe. I worked at Nielsen, which is a CPG data analytics firm. I've worked as a product manager at a LED lighting firm focused in China. I've also worked in consulting and I'm now a product manager at Cisco Systems, the networking company. So welcome today. Now, what is very important about you two being here is you recommended to my graduate students, or recommended to me that all my graduate students would really find this book valuable. So I'd like to know why you feel it's a must read for anyone who wants to go into any kind of an analytical job. I found this book to be extremely helpful in part because it gives you a lot of pretty binary rules that can make you quickly make decisions about formatting and have a very strong foundation for effectively laying out information. In particular, I recommend it to many of the people who join our team as analysts um, and find that it saves everybody collectively a lot of time. And as soon as you've read the book, you'll find that you will start seeing these types of mistakes it all over the place with people that you work with both within your own company and at others so it, it really makes things pop out like it says don't put your words in all caps because it makes them harder to read we're trained to read things in, in lowercase and so unless you're really trying to make a statement with that it's confusing and distracting rather than effective yeah I think that's exactly right and what I would add is that the book does a really good job of giving you the tools to tell a story with data. And I think any role you're in requires you to tell a story because whether you're doing public policy analysis or you're working in a financial firm or you're doing product management, you have to sell your ideas and you have to sell them in a compelling and cogent way if you want others to understand what you're doing and if you want them to take up your idea and push that forward with you. And doing that with data requires a really clear idea of what you want the data to tell the, the person who's reading it and how you want them to you know, move, take that data and go do something with it. And this gives you those very tactical tools and binary rules, as Kate said, to, to do that in a more effective and clear way. So I wonder if each of you could share like some tip or insight that you thought was really brilliant. This is something I never thought of before, or this is just very useful. Sure, and a lot of the tips that stand out to me, I'm not sure I'd put them in the, in the really brilliant category for parts of the book, but more things that are, are simple and therefore super easy to implement um, and that I remember, which is not always the case when reading these types of books. So, one is the uh, being thoughtful about the color palette that you're using and you'll see you'll see decks that have a different type of color palette on every page without any reason for that so it emphasizes when you're using different colors to be thoughtful about why and to Jeff's point what story are you trying to tell so using it to tell the story rather than using it in a way that that causes somebody to get distracted I was actually trying to find the page where they talk about having complementary colors to, together too. You know, again, because just easier to visually take in. Yeah, it takes it to the next level. The, the book goes beyond just making sure you're thoughtful about what the color palette right. is and starts to think about what do, within, within one range of colors, does it make sense to use different shades? Are there complementary colors that can make make it more effective when you're trying to, to point something out. And I think for me, I don't, I don't think of myself as somebody who has an eye for design. And so it also helps aid to have a very strong foundation in something that I might otherwise not be able to, to pick up on 
as easily. So it brings greater clarity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think there's a lot of great tips in the book and color is definitely one of them. And that speaks to the broader um, points that Donna makes in the book around every choice that's made should be intentional in the way it helps convey the information and helps tell the story behind that information. And in addition to color, other examples could be as simple as what is the order that the bar charts are displayed in um, or, you know, are there, high to low. it could be high to low, it could be alphabetical, uh, whatever it is, but that should be an intentional decision and not just the way the data was, was initially presented to you before you did any processing. And the second big thing that I, I think is really powerful is also sort of general, but she talks about how simple transformations of the data can actually be very helpful in helping the, the reader understand what they're supposed to get out of the chart. An example being, you can show the raw absolute values in a, in a bar chart, but it might be difficult to distinguish you know, trends in that information. And so instead showing percentages over time uh, from one year to the next could be a more effective way to highlight the changes that occurred in that data set when showing it in a full you know, absolute value, those differences would become so small that it would be hard to distinguish one year from the next. That's and great. That's great. Go ahead. W one other thing that stands out to, in the book for me is that it provides a, a hierarchy of types of information. And that, so it talks about if you have, if you have purely text and it's really dense, that's about the, that's the, the bottom of the hierarchy. Mm -hmm. So sort of the, not the worst, but not ideal if there's a better way to show that information. So above text would be being able to put it into a table where you have some way of framing in a more organized way. Above that is if you can have a graph. And so it, it gives you levels that makes it, and you'll start to see, see this in, again in all different decks. If you get something that's just text heavy and dense throughout the whole thing, it's not a very effective way of sharing information. And I think this book has enabled me to have a better tool for explaining that which might have felt intuitive before, but it puts it in a, in a very simplistic, organized way of thinking through why is a table better than text? Why is a graph better than a table? That's great. Yeah, and it's, it's very intuitive when you think about when you see a chart and you see a line going up and to the right, there's sort of a visceral reaction that we've all been trained mm -hmm. over the years to say, that's probably a good thing. But seeing that same information in a table where it's a row of numbers, increasing over time, it's much harder to quickly process that and understand the story there. And even more so if it's a you know short paragraph explaining how GDP went up by this amount over this period of time and this had that effect, then it's even harder to understand at a quick glance, but a, a chart can quickly really convey a lot of information. One of the things I always recommend though is oftentimes there's some people who are more visual learners and others that are more text. And so I always encourage my students to write it out but then put the visual in to complement. And many times elected officials only look at the pictures. So it's a great, powerful. So what are some no-nos that you learned from this book? Yeah, there's a pretty long list that the book provides. Um, a couple that, that come to mind right away. One is to be thoughtful about not rotating your text. So sometimes you'll see people, especially with graphs, have text that's vertical and turned to the side and you end up tilting your head in a very awkward way trying to interpret it. Mm -hmm. And you're suddenly completely distracted from whatever the actual content of the slide is. Another one that's sort of is similar in terms of distracting the audience unnecessarily is having white or very light text against a dark background. And I think there are instances where that might be effective, but you need to be very intentional about using it rather than a default where it just makes it harder for somebody to, to read and makes it less legible. Yeah, another one that I really liked and Kate had brought up in an earlier conversation was how if you have charts that are side by side in context, users will naturally want to compare one to the other. And so you need to be thoughtful about what the two y-axes are and make sure that they either have the same absolute values or the same percentage change across them so that those trends are actually comparable to one another and not misleading 
uh, the user that you know these two side by side things when compared are actually very different when in reality what you're trying to show is that the change over time is actually the same. What about decimals? Drives me up the wall. <laughs> Thoughts about decimal points. There's a lot in the book about just keeping, being consistent with the information mm -hmm. that you're showing. So that was one example in terms of the axes. Decimal points is another one. So within, within one table, for instance, don't have certain numbers that have five decimal points and mm -hmm. others that have one because it makes it very difficult for somebody to pick up on the trend of the information in an effective way. And right justify those numbers. Yes, right yeah. justify the numbers. Yeah, left justify text and right justify numbers is, is sort of a general thing that makes tables a lot easier to read. I want to thank you both. I want to thank you for suggesting this book for my graduate students and hopefully you now will be motivated to use this as a tool, not only for this course, but as you go forward in your careers.